Hello and welcome to the video. This is a quick look at a new camera from Runcam. Now this is the Runcam MIPI. This is their new camera designed for the DJI uh, FPV HD system. Now I have videos on that and how it's all set up and I looked at another new camera from Cadex a couple of weeks ago. So it's really interesting to see uh, Runcam come out with their own camera for the DJI system. So I thought I'd get one in, uh, we'd have a look at it take it for a fly and see how it is. Now this new camera seems to be a digital version based on the Runcam Racer 4 which is one of my favourite little cameras. Now this isn't compatible with the SharpBite system. Uh, if you want one for the SharpBite system then you need the Runcam Nano HD. This one is designed as I said before for the DJI HD FPV system. This one has a 6G high quality lens and weighs only about 6.5 grams, so it is very small and lightweight. Default resolution on this is 1280 by 720 at 60 frames a second. Uh, published latency figures are 32 milliseconds. Now that is 16 by 9. That is a 4.3 option, um, kind of listed on the website, but it's not accessible through the DJI goggles. It talks about the being a customizable 1920 by 1080 at 60 frames a second, um, but you have to email them at runcam.com for customization service. Uh, so the one I've got here that I'm trying out is only a 16.9 camera, which is similar again to the most recent camera that I've looked at from another manufacturer. Dimensions of this thing are 19 by 19 millimeter standard sizes, but a little bit less deep. It's only 17 millimeters with the usual M2 mounting screws at the side. Inside, there's a 2 megapixel CMOS sensor. Lens on it is a 1.8 millimeter with a field of view diagonally of 160 degrees. It's a rolling shutter and it is an ABS case, again weighing about 6.5 grams. So I have installed the camera into my GEP RC Cinelog here and replaced the camera that was in there so I could get some flight footage and do a little bit of testing before I make the video. Now the interesting thing to note here is that most HD cameras or everyone that I've had set this one, the way it works is that the cable comes out the bottom side of the camera and goes into the air unit. Uh, with this one it's the opposite way around. So the side on the camera where the cable comes out of is actually the top. Be aware of that, I got it the wrong way around and then had to kind of undo the M2 mounting screws at the side and flip it over 180 degrees. In flight the image is a good balance and very easy to use. The colours are really natural and the exposure levels are good. Now this is directly from the DVR in my goggles and you're probably spotting a couple of things. The main thing that I noticed when I was flying is there's quite a bit of pixelation on the sides of the 69 image. Now that is pretty typical for a lot of the cameras and stuff that I played with here with the DJI system uh, but it is quite noticeable and the DJI system does tend to try and preserve the center portion of the image at the resolution of those outer edges. The white balance can change in different light conditions but I found it reasonably good here and for me the image is good and a huge improvement over the Cadix nano cameras I'm not a particular fan of. So this is another camera for us in the non-Nebula Pro wilderness that we seem to be having. Now this is only 16.9 again, a disappointing is in 4.3. I'm guessing it's only 16.9 because of the same reasons we had things like the Cadix Polar in that there is a chip shortage of the sensors needed to have both of the modes. Colour is good with decent reproduction and the way it performs is very nice. The only thing I didn't like was the amount of pixelation around the outsides and that might just be the DJI system. But I don't see it as much on some of the other cameras that I've tried. A couple of things to be aware of. Uh, apart from the fact, again, it's only 16.9, I was getting a little bit of jello on this uh, with the Nebula Pro camera that was on it originally. I didn't have any jello with the Cadix Polar. I had a little bit of jello and I was getting jello with this as well. Could be something to do with the shutter, the way that works, that's having those problems. 
and watch out for the way the cable comes out the top when you mount it so that you don't mount it upside down if you're following the convention of pretty much every other HD camera that's been out there. So in summary, this is a lot better than the Nebula Nano cameras. And if you're looking for something that's quite compact and small and also at a decent price point, and let's hope that introduces a little bit more competition for the other manufacturers of cameras for the DJI HD FPV system. But hopefully we will have even more options coming for the DJI system in the future. The challenge that I have at the moment isn't getting hold of the cameras. It's actually getting hold of the air units of all flavor. So let's hope they come into freer supply soon. But it's exciting to see Runcam throwing their hat into the ring because the more choice we have, the more camera types, sizes, capabilities, sensitivities we can get to suit different types of models and flying styles. So links down below if you want to go and have a look, but uh, that is the Runcam Mippy. Thank you for spending your time today watching that video. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you're trying to learn about a subject, then check out the playlist. All of my videos are organized into easy to follow playlists that if you're trying to learn a topic, will take you from the basics right the way through to some pretty advanced stuff.